Hello, this is October 12, 2021. This is Glenda Carlin, and this is our weekly A Course in Miracles Zoom meeting. Thank you, thank you for each person that's here in the Zoom meeting and those that will watch the YouTube videos later. Thank you so much. And thank you, Helen Schuchman and Bill Fitford for doing A Course in Miracles for Helen for the dictation from Jesus and then Gary Renard for the books that he's written, Love Has Forgotten No One, Disappearance of the Universe and Your Immortal Reality, um, which explain this true forgiveness that we talk about here. And then I wanna thank also the Dzogchen teachings of Lama Surya Das that run parallel with the course. So welcome, welcome everyone. And I start everything in the course Jesus talks about. We address our brothers as see them as son of God or face of Christ. So welcome son of God, Troy, son of God, Joan, son of God, Francis, son of God, Eli, son of God, Gonzalo, son of God, the lady or gentleman in the iPhone, son of God, Joan Lloyd, son of God, Marion, son of God, Kareem, son of God, Teresa, son of God, Debbie. Son of God, Julia, Son of God, Peter, and Son of God, Glenda. Welcome, 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 each of you here tonight. Um, we do, I want to also, <laughs> Jesus, Holy Spirit are, are always here, but I invite them in. I invite in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, ascended masters, enlightened beings, come in and be here, help us, guide us what to do and say, and to have fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now we'll do a meditation, but I wanted to share something with you because um, the meditation that I do um, deals with the great ray that Jesus says in the course that connects us to eternity. And because that great ray downloads and uploads in my mind since March of 2019, when I, um, the, the arc of light was re released after I practiced true forgiveness from disappearance of the universe that I learned from Gary Bernard. Um, I found that in this book called Letting Go of the Person You Used to Be, which is Lama Surya Das. Now, Marion's got her hand up. So let's ask, Marion, you got a question, honey? Guess not. Marion, Marion, you fine? <laughs> Okay, anyway, I, since then, then that ray of light, it's a light, a ray that comes in from the top of your head, down through your, down the middle of you into the ground. It's here now, even though you may not be aware of it. And I wasn't, um, Christian Stanbury's coming in. I think, oh, Christian's here twice, okay. Hey, Christian. And, um, in this book from Lama Surya Das, here I want to explain. <laughs> he is explaining how to bring that light down. And this is in this book and it's called a meditation. And why I'm bringing it up is so y'all don't think I'm making this up. <laughs> in this Dzogchen teaching, they're actually trying to do what's happening now naturally to me because of that practice of true forgiveness I did. But the meditation is called H-A-M-S-O, Hamso. And in that meditation, here's what he talks about. They use a mantra to bring down the blessings from above, evoking it from the divinity within. And they talk and it visualized the light streaming down from the infinite higher power source above the head. And so we aren't the only one in A Course of Miracles trying to do this. And because this is a Dzogchen Buddhism book and in Hindu, they talk about a cord of light. But Jesus in A Course of Miracles talks about the great ray and the arc of light. So that's why if you want to get comfortable, we're going to do a, a meditation for only two or three minutes, and then we'll have our Course in Miracles topic tonight. Um, so just relax there and visualize. And I explained to us 
that for billions of years, we've been visualizing form because we believed in duality. We, and even that's why we are, we're reincarnated now into a body. We believe we're a body, so we're experiencing we're a body. And that's the purpose of A Course of Miracles that Jesus, he learned to undo ego. He's our elder brother. And this is his high teaching that as we see our brother, we see ourselves, and, and we are the light of the world. So this light is within us and he wants us to become aware of it. So um, there's a, we visualize light now instead of forms. So above your head, visualize a huge sun that could be worth a thousand suns in that the brilliance of that sun is symbolic of God's source. And per Jesus in the course, there's a great ray that connects us to eternity. So see a ray come off that sun and that ray, it's a column of light or a tube of light that's here now, but you just aren't aware of it. It's invisible light. Just visualize that light. It comes down the middle of you and see it go into the ground. That way you're not floating. You're not floating and, and you're grounded. And I really appreciate Gonzalo emailed me that the first time that I did this meditation and he was here, he thought that was he kind of went, oh, yuck, or something like, right. And now he can visualize and experience some of that light coming down. So, and even if right now you don't see it, it's fine. Because in the workbook, Jesus says, we don't have to understand anything. We just practice these things. We just apply his lessons where he says you're the light of the world. And I'm just giving you a meditation a light that you can, it's here now that you can visualize. Now you're gonna rejoin with that light, but before you do, it's so pristine and so beautiful, you wanna rejoin with it. But I want you to see an altar in your mind and on that altar, put the things you think you need to be happy. then I want you to see that altar in your body disappear into the light. That's bringing darkness to the light. And later you'll be inspired with solutions with whatever you put on that altar because we, uh, Jesus tells us in the course, we are not ever for sake. We, we are given answers for these seeming problems in the illusion. They might come via music, TV, a person conversation, or you're doing the dishes and you get a thought and you go, oh, that's the solution to what I was wondering about. So now visualize that light and it's so beautiful and pristine and loving, you rejoin with it. And that means just relax, shrug your shoulders, just kind of relax your form and you're gonna want to rest in that light. And the, this, instruction I'm giving you about rest in the light that's something Lama Surya told me and it's in the course because one time I was telling him via a workshop retreat that I didn't know how long how long I could be with the light he said we well, are always he says it's hard to join when you're not separate we are not separate from this light we're just not aware of it so just, he told me, just rest in the light. So you're faking it while you make it. You just visualize there's a light there and you're just kind of resting, resting in the light, relax into the light. And if it helps, you could just see these love particles, these love hearts be poured down this tube of light that runs through the middle, middle of you because you are also love. Love is soaked through and through in that light. I call it love light because in the introduction, Jesus says you're removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. So you're just resting in that light. And if your mind wanders, no big deal. Just bring your attention back to that light that's there and rest for a minute.
And you can just kind of, even with your eyes closed or open, kind of lift your eyes upward, upward. And that'll help you kind of focus your attention on that light. That's there, it's invisible. It's clear light. Although as you awaken from this dream of separation, as your eyes are closed, you'll see different colors of light sometimes in this awakening process. And you don't have to see colors. <laughs> Every person's experience is different, but there are different colors. So when you want, you can bring your attention back to this, your room, this place, but you can do this meditation anytime during the day or night. When I wake up in the night, I'll go and focus my attention on that light above my head and meditate for a few seconds, few minutes, and then I go back to sleep. And then during the day, I do the same thing because what we're wanting to more and more often be in that light and, and we're visualizing it during the day. That's why the course has all these lessons. Jesus says every 15 minutes, do this, or every hour, do that. What we're doing is training our mind. He says, this is a course in mind training. We're learning to undo the ego and take charge of our mind and not let it be monkey mind or robot mind or Lama Surya calls it popcorn mind. All these thoughts just go through it back and forth, back and forth. And we just watch the thoughts come and go like um, birds in the sky or clouds in the sky. We don't get attached to it. And attached means as soon as you have a thought, if you go off with that story, then you're attached to that thought and you're off wandering where Jesus says we're too uh, uh, used to idle mind wandering. So yeah, as soon as you're, it's called bell of mindfulness. As soon as you can bring your attention back to your mind and think, what was I just thinking about? <laughs> what was I thinking about? And typically, we're judging our brothers. <laughs> we're judging something on TV. We're judging a, a car we're driving. We're judging people when we walk out on the street or in a park. The, the my, egoic mind is, a, is default. That's the typical default that where we're judging our brothers as bodies. So we just catch our mind by how, and Jesus says, by how we feel our feelings and our mood tells us which voice we're listening to, whether it's the voice for hope for God, which is Holy Spirit, or the egoic thought system, which is false. We made it up and it's running the show. And so in the, in the seems to be, Jesus says, who is in charge of the kingdom? Well, you are gonna, you are learning to undo your false egoic thoughts. So you're in charge of your mind because you are in charge of the kingdom. The kingdom is, the Christ mind, your higher mind, but the unconscious mind is as deep as an iceberg. And as you practice your true forgiveness, which now this might be a good point to do, we're going to stop and you pick three people on the screen to practice true or advanced forgiveness. Per Jesus, what that means, he says, Christ's vision has one law, and that is you look beyond the body of your brother to the invisible spirit that's there. That's in the Course of Miracles. Christ's vision has one law. You do not look at the body. You just look past my form or anybody on the screen. There's invisible light that is there. That's their spirit. And that's in that light is the oneness of everything as well. So, and we can also, like I have a four-page forgiveness document. If anyone doesn't have it, I've composed it based on the course, Gary Renard's Fearless Love CD and Love has forgotten no one. And where he said, says there's three major ways to undo this false ego. That is by meditation, second, turning your day over to the Holy Spirit and practicing this true or advanced forgiveness. And Gary Renard's Immortal Re Reality, Art and Persa say, you look at the person and silently say, you are spirit, whole, pure, and innocent, all is forgiven and released. And to yourself, you say, I am immortal spirit. This body is a false image and has nothing to do with what I am. Or you can say all of it to everything that shows up in front of your face and to yourself. So pick three people on the screen and practice true forgiveness.
please. So you're looking either past their form to the invisible spirit that's there, their perfection and Christ mind that's there, or you're silently saying all of it, or you are spirit, hope, pureness, and all is forgiven and released. And see how easy that is? I did this for five years, rotely, without knowing what I was doing, without, I just had faith and trust that Jesus and Holy Spirit and art and person knew what the hell they were talking about. If I practice this, then possibly I could wake up from the dream. I'm not completely awakened, but I'm awakening and you are too, or you wouldn't be here wanting to hear these things. So um, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Now that's kind of a segue into my topic tonight. I was, you know, at that Gary Renard workshop in Asheville, October 2nd, that was a Saturday. And I was staying with Miriam Watley. Miriam was here for a bit. She might've, so anyway. Um, and then later, I, my husband, I used to have a, who's passed uh, five years ago, August, he's passed, but we had a, we bought property in North Carolina and built a vacation house. And the lady that sold us the property was a real estate agent. And she's the one I stayed with there. She about an hour east of Asheville out in the country is where we built a mile from the Blue Ridge Park Lake, this beautiful rural area. The, this lady, her name's June, is just a very loving, open person. But I have never, ever discussed A Course in Miracles with her or anything about Jesus, uh, Great Ray, nothing. Um, so she picked me up and we went to her house and for some reason, and I can't remember what for some reason, she was talking about that she didn't, she wanted peace. Now picture somebody saying that to you. She wanted peace because she was having a couple of disruptive things going on with two of her children. She has three. And then she was talking about um, how she's this open and loving person. So she didn't quite understand why they were, how they were, blah, blah. Well, it just transitioned that I started talking about A Course in Miracles. And then I, for some reason, was telling her there's an invisible light that we each are. And by practicing this advanced forgiveness, a person can have vision and see that light and feel that light. And I described to her about the great ray how me practicing this advanced forgiveness. And she wanted to know, well, what's that kind of forgiveness? And she was open to hearing about what I described well ago. And I'd explain it to her. And then I explained what happened to me is about the great, the arc of light got released in my mind. And then 10 days later, the great ray downloaded in my mind and would come out of my mind. And I explained this process about this light and that we are connected to eternity with this great ray. And that's when she told me this story. Now she picture she's, and she, I asked her, can I share this? I'm not gonna give her last name. And she said, yes, can I share this with my Course in Miracle group? And she's currently 79 years old. When she was seven years old, her mother wasn't home that often and her father traveled to earn money and they lived in the country. And she had two younger brothers. And I can't quite remember if one, one of them was three or four, but the youngest I remember was 18 months old. And the mother would be gone and they had a wood stove. Um, and I can relate to that because I was born in the country in Missouri and my parents had a wood stove that they cooked on and um, an outhouse back those many, I'm 70 years old many years ago. So um, I could relate to what she was talking about. I never went, I never went out and had to cut kindling to keep a stove going. We would do chores, but bless her heart. So June was left with her two brothers and the mother had made a pot of beans or something and June was gonna do cornbread and she needed to get this wood stove going. 
She was outside cutting kindling with a hatchet. And she looked down and she had cut her pinky finger with that hatchet. And her pinky finger was, was held by just a bit of skin. It was flopped down. And she said to herself, I'm always alone. There's never, ever anybody here to help me when I need it. And in that instant, a shaft of light came out of the trees towards her to her face. It was a warm light. And the, a voice said, you are never alone. I am with you always. A little kid, seven years old. She took a twig and put under her pinky and a rag and tied her pinky to that twig to make it straight. She never went to the doctor, no stitches, no antibiotic. And her finger healed, but it had a little bent to it. And she showed it to me. And she likes that it had a little bent because the bent reminded her she was never the hell alone. I am with you always. And I just, tears came to my eyes because she heard the voice for God. Now, when I researched in the course, see online there's the course in where you can search words or phrases. I searched always, I'm always with you. And I came up with these things from chapter 17 and then chapter eight. And then there's also lesson 97 and 44. But I had see every time we read in the course, we read a sentence and we go, oh, I hadn't really read that before or because there's so much to read. But here's what Jesus says is in chapter 17, section three. When I said, I am with you always, I meant it literally. I am not absent to anyone in any situation. And here's the beautiful sentence. If you, well, all that's beautiful, but if you will accept the fact that I am with you, you are denying the world and accepting God. Now hear that. So if you can ex accept that Jesus is right here, right now with you, and he is, you've accepted the fact you're denying the world and accepting God. My will is his, and your decision to hear me, meaning hear Jesus, is the decision, decision to hear his voice and abide in his will. As God sent me to you, so I will send you to others, and I will go to them with you so we can teach them peace and union. So see, Jesus says, then the, that's when you believe he's there, then also that's the decision to hear the voice for Holy Spirit. And then that's when the Holy Spirit told me, then you, I need to read to you from uh, clarification of terms in the back of the book, it, where it says for Holy Spirit, this is, this is phenomenal, is where this is uh, Holy Spirit, the definition of what Holy Spirit is. Jesus is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So when you believe Jesus is with you, you know, you're really, it's really Holy Spirit's there. And then it's, Jesus goes on, whom he called down upon, upon the earth after he ascended into heaven or became completely identified with the Christ, the son of God as he created him. And the Holy Spirit being a creation, the one, blah, blah. Now wait. He was called down upon the earth in the sense that it was now possible to accept him and to hear his voice. So but prior to Jesus's waking up from the dream, Holy Spirit had not been called down to the earth so we could hear his voice before, I guess, angels had to show up. But Jesus is saying here, then once he called it, whom he called down to earth after he ascended into heaven, meaning Jesus. So isn't that great? <laughs> we got, when you think of Jesus, you're thinking of Holy Spirit. And then also ultimately you're thinking about God. So bless this woman's heart, seven years old. You are never alone. I am with you always. So what that taught her was she then called God daddy. Daddy had her back by golly. So when she got married and had three kids by the time she was 18, she knew 
God, what she called it, God, you know, even the course, we know God didn't know anything about all this. It's Holy Spirit. That's you know, but I didn't clarify all that. But <laughs> she, in essence, Holy Spirit and God, they're one. Jesus, they're one. Had her back. She had the faith and trust, and she would get thoughts. I'm not kidding you. Same thought, she, that inspiration I'm talking about. You can be guided what to do to make this dream a happier dream. There's less chaos for you in your life. What be guided what to do or say. So he helped her. She moved to Florida without any money or car and got a job in Florida, made a way with her three children, became a successful real estate agent. But to this day, daddy's got her back. But she was, I never knew why I was going there. I was going there to help her with, she wanted peace. That's what she said. So I said, okay, June, here's the deal. You got one of the three tools down to have this peace you want. One big one is to turn your day over to Holy Spirit, which in essence is God, and you've got that down. But next is practicing true or advanced forgiveness on what shows up in front of your face. And, set, and third is meditating. Because without meditation, you can't turn within to go to that light that's there within, that luminous, glimmering light that's here within that is your true essence. So bless her heart, she'd asked me about meditation and I explained it to her. I explained about advanced forgiveness. I emailed her the document and I told her the best thing to do is to say all of it to who, what showed up in front of her face. And so when she'd be telling me something about one of her, uh, whatever, something that's going on, she would damn catch herself that she was judging somebody and she'd go, what was that, everything? I go, all of it. She go, all of it. Because <laughs> see, you just say all of it. You don't have to damn understand any of this. I'm not, I'm here to tell you it. You don't have to, Jesus says it in the introduction to the workbook. You don't have to understand anything. Just apply his lessons in the true forgiveness, and you will ultimately wake up from the stream of separation. Um, now, what I want to share too is. Her two children were giving her a hard time about some stuff, which I won't go into. But the point is, I explained to her, even though we practice true or advanced forgiveness on what shows up in front of her face and images that show up in our mind, we are not psychological, psychological doormats or physical doormats to anybody. So we're, you're guided by, yes, Holy Spirit to help you, what boundaries you're to set and what corrections you're to do with your children. And she repeated me two or three things her friends told her that she should be doing with those kids. And I said, well, you got to ask Holy Spirit or God and you'll be guided what to do because you're, we're not doormats. <laughs> so anyway, um, we had a marvelous time about this having fun while we were practicing forgiveness on stories that she would bring out up and then because I lived there as a vacation house, then as we passed properties or people's houses, I would, I knew what my reason was to, one of the reasons I was there was to practice true or advanced forgiveness on the people that we used to visit with there in North Carolina. And this was, um, um, let's see, about 10 years ago. So, so as one of the things we do before you go to sleep at night is review your day about what images you've seen on TV or in your house or you've talked to on the phone or you've walked and seen people in the grocery store or cashier. You're practicing this advanced forgiveness on. But also for me, I was practicing forgiveness on people from this past area where I vacationed. And anytime their image comes to mind, I just, now that I'm home, I keep doing the same thing. So <laughs> that's our purpose here. Our main purpose is to practice advanced forgiveness, turn our day over to Holy Spirit and meditate <laughs> to undo this false ego. Now, I'll just read a few more things here of what Jesus says about, I am with you, with you always. Wow, this is in chapter eight. Oh God. I said that oh I am, 
I said that I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That is why I am the light of the world. If I am with you in the loneliness of the world, the loneliness is gone. Because see, um, with thoughts of separation, we feel lonely. And that's why, in, I forget in which Gary Renard's book says, we can't just say this is an illusion. We need to replace our thoughts of separation and illusion with wholeness, which is this true or advanced forgiveness. Because if we just walk around here saying, that's not real, that's not real, this is false, that's a dream, that's an illusion, then you will feel lonely. You will feel uh, that you're not real. I'm false. That's why you replace it with, it's a big deal. You replace this with this advanced forgiveness. You, you, you never just do one of them. You first, you're acknowledging something's false and then you're practicing forgiveness about it. Or if not, you're going to feel lonely and desperate and suffer. So, but he, if we think about Jesus is with us all, always, then that loneliness is gone. You cannot maintain the illusion of loneliness if you're not alone. Jesus is with you always. My purpose then is still to overcome the world. I do not attack it, but my light must dispel it because of what it is. Light does not attack darkness, but it does shine it away. My light goes with you everywhere. You shine it away with me. The light becomes ours. And you cannot abide in darkness any more than darkness can abide wherever you go. The remembrance of me is a remembrance, the remembrance of yourself and of him who sent me to you, meaning God. Jesus tells us in chapter section eight, section, I mean, chapter eight, section four, which I, this is worth repeating. If we will accept the fact that he is with us, we are denying the world and accepting God. That our decision to hear Jesus is the decision to hear Holy Spirit's voice. Because in the course, Jesus says, very few can hear the voice for God. But you can. If you practice this advanced forgiveness, turn your day over to Holy Spirit and meditate. You can hear that voice. All right. Um, lesson 97. God is with you always as you are with him. See, we're, uh, the Course says we are asleep in heaven, dreaming a dream of exile, but we're perfectly capable of awakening. So, because, so God is with you always. We're safe at home of he in heaven, but we're dreaming a dream. And in one of Renard's books, he says, you know, when you're dreaming at night and you're uh, having a dream, you're in safe at bed, in bed at night, dreaming a dream. What is dreaming that dream? Your eyes are closed. You got to ask yourself that big time. What's dreaming that dream? Your eyes are closed. Well, what's dreaming that dream is your damn mind. The mind is dreaming that dream, seeing that dream. So even when we wake up in the morning, the course tells us we're having a daytime dream. We're in Jesus, we're just doing a serial dreaming, nighttime dream, daytime dream. So in the morning, before you get out of bed, you're turning your day over to Holy Spirit, but you're thinking about this dream. So your, your eyes are closed. The mind is um, reviewing this dream. And in the course, Jesus says, you're mentally reviewing what's already gone by. And in one of Gary Renard's books, he says, what's a better, or Art and Purse say, what's a better, better definition of a movie? This has already been filmed. It's already been done. And it's, you're reviewing it. So it's like you're in a movie theater. Out in front of you is the screen of this so-called life. This screen right here in front of you. The projector is your mind. That projector that's behind in the movie theater, just picture that's your mind. That's projecting out these images, but they're being projected in a beam of light. They're, the light is here always, but we're projecting false images out in our mind and they, in our mind, but they seem to be projected out there. So you're using these images on the screen in front of you to practice forgiveness on. 
And Jesus teaches us the first half of the workbook lessons are to get you to practice on what seems to be out there. And the second half of the workbook is taking you into your mind to get you to realize their images in your mind that you're forgiving. So during the day when you're sitting around or thinking or whatever, and an image comes to mind of a person, practice forgiveness on that image. But in essence, that's all we're doing is image making. That's lesson 15, I think, because the thoughts you think you think appear as images. You don't see them as nothing. You think you think them, so you think you see them. This is what you call image making. It's not what we call, or Jesus calls image making. This is not vision. The two eyes are making images, subject and object. And we're going back within our mind to this higher mind, this Christ mind, this Buddha mind that's aware of its true nature, which is this light and love. That's what you're going back. You're, remem you're remembering, you're realizing, you're recognizing. So it's a big deal to practice this true forgiveness. And this you develop an awareness of perfect oneness because that's in the definition of heaven. Heaven is not a place per Jesus in the course. Heaven is not a place or a condition. It's merely an awareness of perfect oneness and the knowledge that there's nothing else, nothing outside that oneness and nothing else within. So nothing outside that oneness means nothing out here in front of you. Because the beginning of that paragraph on de definition of heaven, which we discussed two weeks ago, is starts out, Jesus says, there's nothing outside of you. That is what you must ultimately learn, for it's the realization that the kingdom of heaven has been restored to you. See, of all the things you could study, this is the highest, highest teaching, the fastest way out of the dream. Jesus tells us in the course, this will save you thousands of years, eons, he says in other places. And so that's when I ask people, well, if you don't believe in reincarnation, then why did Jesus say this will save you thousands of years? Because that means you think you're a body, you're experiencing your body. So unless you wake up from this dream, then when you pass in this lifetime, you will reincarnate into another body. And then you'll go through this same process of trying to remember what you are, what your brothers are, and what God is. And for you to be in such a group tonight with me <laughs> and, fought, and studying A Course in Miracles and studying Gary Renard or this Dzogchen teaching Buddhism that I'm also getting involved in. You have been through the ringer with Hinduism and Buddhism to come to here, come to Jesus's high, high teaching of how you see your brother is how you think of yourself. And he says about it, everything's a holy encounter. In your brother, you either find yourself or lose yourself. So to this day, Every, sometimes when I'm talking to people, when I'm doing my walks or I'm out and about, I'll forget to think of them as spirit. And as soon as I can, when I'm back home or in my car, I'm going, oh man, I forgot. I think of them as spirit. You are spirit. Hope, pureness, and all is beginning to release. That's what it, this is the, this is the mind training because we're catching ourselves. How am I thinking of my brother? In my brother, I either find myself or I lose myself per Jesus. So thank God there's these things outside our mind that we can practice forgiveness on. Without that, I mean, in one of Renard's books, Art and Persis say, how would you ever be in your mind and think about these images or images I made up if they weren't projected out there? So we can use this false world to help us wake up, of course. Now, let's see what we got. Oh, and lesson 97 starts with, I am spirit. We state again the truth about yourself. The Holy Son of God who rests in you. So when you rest in that light, that light is you, the Holy Son of God, whose mind has been restored to sanity. You are the spirit lovingly endowed with all your father's love and peace and joy. You are the spirit which completes himself and shares his function as creator he is with you always yay that's the part he is with you always 
as you are with him. Today, we try to bring reality still closer to you, your mind. Each time you practice, awareness is brought a little nearer at least. Sometimes a thousand years or more are saved. There it is again. The minutes which you give are multiplied over and over. For the miracle makes use of time, but it's not ruled by it. Salvation is a miracle. The first and last. The first that is the last, for well, it is one. So uh, true of uh, one definition of a miracle is you're changing your false perception to true perception. That's the purpose of the course, Jesus says. The purpose of the course is not understanding and not knowledge. That comes after while you're waking up. That comes later. So you just are wrote practicing this true forgiveness. The light, to, the light to have vision is within and is with you always, that light. Lesson 44, in order to see, you must recognize that light is within, not without. You do not see outside yourself, nor is the, listen to this, nor is the equipment for seeing outside of you. So he's calling it equipment. The equipment to see is not out there. The equipment to see is in your mind. It's, uh, it's your Christ mind. It's Holy Spirit that's in your mind. Don't, oh, I'm going to read that again. You do not see outside yourself, nor is the equipment for seeing outside of you. An essential part of this equipment is the light that makes seeing possible. So see, that's why you're faking it while you make it. You're visualizing that light that's within because also in that four-page forgiveness document, there's a paragraph in there that's a meditation that's in the course that Jesus is meditation. And that meditation, I can say part of it, it says uh, beyond the body. See, that's what true forgiveness is, remember? Beyond the body. We're looking beyond the body. I'm looking past y'all's pictures to that invisible spirit that's there. Beyond the body, beyond the sun and stars. Past everything you see is an arc of golden light. And that then something, something that light expands to fill the circle and extends to infinity. So see what's happening is there's an arc of golden light. When the one son of God seemed to blow his mind apart during the big bang, when that stupid mad idea occurred, the one son of God's mind blew into these little arcs of light. You each got one, but the arc of light's in the onion of layers of judgment. And as you practice your advanced forgiveness, Holy Spirit could heal unconscious guilt and peel away hundreds, if not thousands of judgments out of your unconscious mind that you can't get to. And finally, there's enough layers peeled away. That's in love has forgotten no one. By you thinking of your brother as everything or all of it, they, Arten and Persis say, you are doing something that very few people in history have ever done. You're thinking of your brother as all of it, because you are all of it, because God is all of it, meaning everything. There's nothing else but God. We made all these images up. But the point is, that's that when you do forgiveness work, uh, they, Arten and Persis talk about, people will say, oh, I'm bored. Nothing's happening. Ah, oh, nothing's happening. The person didn't change out there. I don't feel any different. And Art and Persis say, wait a minute. <laughs> you have no idea if you practice true forgiveness that Holy Spirit and Jesus are taking that forgiveness and changing dimensions of time and space, not just for you, but for all of humanity. For all animate and inanimate beings, everything. Now you agreed to one script, but within that script, there are, I think, millions of dimensions of time and space. So, and as you practice that forgiveness, the, they there will be less hard knocks that you won't you won't have to experience. In uh, Art and Persa talk about, and Gary Renard in workshops talks about. If you can answer these questions, you get to skip chapters three, four, and five. Then you read some more and you go, if you can answer these questions, you get to skip chapters five, six, and you know, seven, eight, and nine. What he's saying, they're saying here is 
you can skip dimensions of time and space where you would have had hard knocks that you will not have to do. So really, this is a selfish deal you're trying to do here besides wake up. Do you want some hard knocks that you don't even know you agreed to? No, of course we don't. So this, this advanced forgiveness, besides waking you up, it makes for a happier dream. And the happier dream comes about because even no matter what happens, let's say you have a hard knock or something occurs, loss of a loved one, your, your peace is not lost like it used to be. You come back to peace sooner when it used to take you years or six months or three months or a month or it'll come back in days or an hour or overnight. That's how you know you're making progress because you're not stuck in this chaos. Um, so the thing is, you are never alone. <laughs> I am with you always, which means Jesus and Holy Spirit and God. So um, isn't that marvelous? I <laughs> mean, marvelous to, to, to know that. So, oh, and in the course, Jesus says, just take my hand. And, uh, and here in this, uh, his thing, he says, this is literal. He says, I meant this literally. He's saying this. I meant it literally. I am not absent to anyone in any situation. And in the course, he says, take my hand. So I'll reach my hand out and you just picture his hand. I mean, what the hell? We are remembering we're spirit. But that light expands out of this form. We become illumined. The body, because the body is a false image in the mind, as the mind is illumined from thoughts of separation from God, the form is illumined. And that way, there's just light, just light shining here. And that Jesus is just light by coming out of him. But he is right here by you. And it really builds your faith and trust to then think of, you know, in front of you is the face of Christ. Is, what if you thought Jesus was showing up right there like, there's Joan, there's Francis, there's Gonzalo, there's Joan Lloyd, there's Eli, there's Troy, there's the iPhone person, Debbie, Julia, Teresa, Kareem, Peter, Christian, Brian. There is Jesus right there. Each one of these faces is the face of Christ, is Jesus, is Holy Spirit is in essence God, because in heaven, there's only God. So God's our father, but in essence, I mean, what if we thought everybody we met was God or Jesus or Holy Spirit? It changed how the hell we acted towards him, right? <laughs> and how we treat ourselves, right? We'd be more loving. It's either love or the call for love. Now, there's no panic about this. You just do the best you can and not let ego Whip beat you up about the, oh, you're not getting this. Yes, you're getting this or you wouldn't be here. Now, we got some minutes here before eight o'clock. If anyone has any questions or comments or things you want to share, um, that'd be wonderful. That'd be great. <laughs> but I'm not putting you on the spot or anything. And remember, we're going to stay here after I'll stop recording at eight or so. Anyone got a thought or comment on? Oh, I should say something about Gary Rock. Wasn't that the cutest picture? People got to take pictures with him and he signed the books. And see, I'm coordinating an event for him here in Melbourne, Florida, November 6th. So he and his wife, Cindy, we kind of have a personal relationship. He's just the sweetest guy. And, uh, and just so thoughtful and wanting to help people wake up from the dream. And he comments that if you're coming to his group, reading his books and the course, there's a good chance you could wake up from this dream of separation in this lifetime. So congratulations for what all you are doing. Oh, look, there's Brian. Hi, Brian. Yay. I know Brian doesn't follow the Boston Red Sox, but those boys won the playoff. <laughs> there's no favorites in the illusion, but I do like the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> We can have fun, folks. You know, in Buddhism, they call it aware of the view, the view. Now, what you're, you're doing with this advanced forgiveness 
the vision that develops as you look out and there's just clear light mind, you won't have a head or a skull. They'll just be clear light mind, clear light spread out everywhere. And you'll realize you are one. You're aware that you're one with everything because there's only oneness. There's only God. And you, that's the awareness. That's called the view in this Dzogchen Buddhism group that Lama Suri Das teaches. This, he teaches this high um, vision like Jesus does where it's the view, the natural great perfection of your innate nature, which is your Buddha mind, your Christ mind, your one with source or God. Not all Buddhists talk about God, but he will sometimes talk about its source, one with your, your brother's oneness. you become aware of perfect oneness and that's invisible light. You can't see oneness. I mean, really, you're just aware of it. <laughs> it's lovely. Anybody got a thought or a question? I so appreciate everybody being here. Okay, well, let me see if there's something else here that, oh, this is lesson 44. Why did that come up? I forget. God is the light in which I see. Well, this is why I'm here. Let's read it. Um, today, we're continuing the idea for yesterday. This is lesson 44. God is the light in which I see. Adding another dimension to it. You cannot see in darkness and you cannot make light. You can make darkness and then think you see in it. But light reflects life, L-I-F-E. And is therefore an aspect of creation. Creation and darkness cannot coexist, but light and life must go together, being but different aspects of creation. In order to see, you must recognize that light is within, not without. You do not see outside yourself, nor is the equipment. Now, that's what we read before. So, see, that's why I call it fake it, faking it while you make it. You're visualizing this light that's within. And you can visualize it white if you want it or golden yellow. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. This is your Christ mind. But it's clear, invisible light as well. Um, and that light is like a hologram. That light radiates er every cell of your body. And you know, then I'll share. I'll share. This is something that happened when I was meditating. So now I, I'm not, I don't do anything. I'm not asking ask you all to do anything I'm not doing but at night when I'm meditating I'll meditate a few seconds or a few minutes and sometimes I meditate with my friend we'll have joined mine we'll be meditating together and I never know when the great ray light will down come in my mind or go out of my mind I don't know but I was meditating with this person and we were finished meditating. It was at night and I was going to stretch, you know, and I had my stretch my hands back over my head and I could feel my head was doing a slight movement back and forth. And I'm pretty sensitive about that light, that great ray. And I go, oh, <laughs> that's the great ray. And so, shoot. So I just get calm and I focus my attention on that light. See, I, that's why I have you. You, it, the light, the column of light, it starts from above your head and comes down in. So I just spoke up my attention on the great ray. It's coming in and going out, but my head is just moving slightly because this is happening in my mind. So my body, you know, is in my mind. So it just moves a little bit on that light because that light is coming in and going out. It's pulsating. And I just stay with that light movement. And then it gets just a little more where my head goes to the left. I don't do any of this. And then let my head comes back to the middle and then my head goes to the right. And there's a, there's a paragraph in the course where Jesus says, uh, you have found your brother and you will light each other's way. And from that light, the great rays will, sh the light from those great rays will shine away the past and forward unto God. No, 
you see, burn on forgiveness, shine away the past and forward unto God to make room for his eternal presence in which everything is radiant in the light. When my head goes to the left, the light is shining away the past. That's all the judgments, the past. Then when my head goes right, it's in making way for God's presence is what happens. Well, when that finished after about 40 minutes, I'm just kind of laying there. And I'm not kidding you. I never know what's going to happen. I have no expectations anymore. Oh, and that brings up a point. You want to not have any expectations on seeing light or colors or anything. And Lama Surya Das calls that. Now, and you don't want to think you've made it because I don't think I'm enlightened or awakened I, I, because this process continues. I don't even know how long all those thoughts of separation need to be purified. He calls it... Um, where people think they're awakened, he goes, this is so funny, you know, premature immaculation. You know, you're the immaculate light, the immaculate. I mean, you think you've made it and you damn haven't made it. And I can swear by that. The light started shining in my head, March of 2019. And I thought, well, heck, I mean, must be awake, the lights. No, 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 no. That's why the iceberg, uh, the art and person talk about the, the judgments as deep as an iceberg. That's miles, thousands of lifetimes, billions of years we've lived thinking we're a body. So those thoughts of separation got to be purified and the Holy Spirit does all that. So the point is, don't think you've made it. Just keep being open to Holy Spirit, Jesus and the truth, these practices no expectations. So see, I had no expectations. And don't you know, after that particular period uh, the other night, I am not kidding you. I had no body. On where my body was, there was this luminous, glimmering light. This light. And it was dense and full, just laying where my body used to be. Because see, that's the hologram. A later Holy Spirit explained. That's like the hologram you see when they do things on TV or in a movie. There's the big projector and you see all that light and you see just a little faint image. Well, that light's going through every cell of that body because you are light. So really why I'm explaining that, you're laying in bed. You can visualize there's just like, instead of your body, there's just a, not a box because it's not confined. There's just particles of luminous, glimmering light. I am not kidding. That is your true self. And I forget in one of Gary's books, they, or maybe, you know, they said Jesus, people couldn't look at it. Or I mean, they'd have to turn away. He had so much light coming off of him because you are this light. And I, that light is with you always. That's why that's coming up on tonight's discussion. Besides Jesus, Holy Spirit, and God are with you always. The light that you are is there always. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Now, since there's no more comments, we'll, I'll just, I'll just uh, if you unmute, your, unmute yourselves, we can say, we're not, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to stop the recording, but then we can, you can say bye to everybody here at this point. Oh, some people might want to be by and you can unmute and say hi and bye and all that. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> and I'll, st I'll stop the recording. Good night. God bless. Thank you. Good night. Good to see you all.